guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a deep dive into a particular trick, a subject, a particular producer, a particular creator, and I tell you exactly what I think about that subject or that particular trick. And today, I'm back with Exquisite by Steve-O Watson. Now, this has only just recently been released by Alakazam. Uh, it's literally only just come out. They did a live launch on it a few days ago. And it's a little bit of a departure for the type of magic that Steve-O Watson does. Now, if you don't know who Steve-O Watson is, um, he is part of uh, Alakazam Magic's creative team. Uh, he's one of the co-directors of Ace Magic Studio. Uh, and he is one of the best gimmick makers, one of the best gaffers in the world. He's actually been nice enough to be a special guest on um, a couple of um, uh, live sessions in, um, in, the, uh, in the Virtual Magic uh, Club out on the Netrix. And he's so knowledgeable. And he makes a lot of the gaffes for Alakazam and also comes out with his own really clever gaffes as well. Well, this is a bit of a departure for Steve because this is completely ungaffed. There's no elastic thread. There's no anything like that. What this is, this is a mentalism routine that's designed to be an everyday carry. So this is something that you can carry around with you. It organically fits inside your wallet and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. And it allows you to do basically a book test in your wallet. And this sort of thing always fascinates me. I love this sort of thing. Uh, if anybody's seen my routine gossip, um, I love it when you've got a powerful routine that you can have in your wallet that feels like it's the sort of thing that would live in there anyway. And this is this is a perfect example of that type of mentalism. Now, before I go into the review and I show you a performance, I'm going to uh, play an interview that I did with Steve-O from the other day. So this is an interview that I did with Steve-O talking about what this is, how it came to be, what the routine is and and what you can expect from if, if you buy it. So I'm going to roll that interview now. Thank you very much for Steve-O for jumping on and doing this interview with me. I'm going to run the interview and then I'm going to bring it back to the studio. And I'm going to give this a full review and a performance. So I'm here with the legend himself, the gimmick maker extraordinaire, the one and only Steve-O Watson. How are you doing, Steve-O? Oh, I'm great. Thank you very much, Craig. What an introduction. How are you? Yeah, are you are. well? You're a legend. You're one of my favourite magicians. And one oh, of man, thank you so much. I've got crumbs in my cheeks. Thank you so much. You are officially <laughs> Ryland's favourite magician. He was oh, so man. annoyed when he found out I was doing this interview and he was going to be <laughs> He was like, why didn't you do it earlier? I'm like, no, get to bed. <laughs> oh, bless him. Oh, honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll send my number. He'll have to give us a video call tomorrow when he's up. <laughs> Absolutely, man. But uh, I'm a bit confused. Now, obviously, we're talking about, we're talking about this and... I want to I want to pick your brain on it. Exquisite just been released. Super mm -hmm. exciting. I was very confused because when I opened it and I looked at it, there ain't no flaps here. <laughs> there's no magnets. There's no <laughs> flaps. There's no invisible thread. Uh, there's no invisible elastic. There's no there's no nothing like that, man. I was looking at it and I was like, right, there's a sheet of paper in here. Let me find <laughs> where, where's the uh, where's the rest of the paper. Oh no, there's no. But what? Did you not um, want to unfold the paper bit fully before you? Yeah, just in case. yeah right. <laughs> this is like a, a bit of a departure for you, isn't it, mate? Like, it is. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about Exquisite, how it came to be, what made you uh, create it, and how come it's so different? Because for those people that don't know, first of all, you should go back and watch Steve O's interview on the channel. It's amazing. But secondly, you specialize in gimmick making. Um, through Ace Magic Studios and Alakazam, mm -hmm. you craft some of the the cleverest gimmicks, not just for yourself, but for you know other creators that have ideas. You come up with mm -hmm. some wonderful ways of doing things. So this is this is like very much a departure from what you normally do. Yeah, it so is indeed. Tell us how it came to be. So. I'll, I'll, you know, I can talk forever, Craig, but I'll I'm keep fine it. With that. I'm so fine I'll, with I'll, that. I'll keep it. Um, very basic so when i first uh started with this i was very much a, a visual magic kind of guy anyone knows that uh my anyone who's heard my lecture or anything like that knows why i got into the visual side of magic and why i wanted to recreate that um but when i started with this 
um, I started to learn a lot more about mentalism effects and um, sort of more about presentational pieces. And one for me uh, was when I joined Ace was spread. And that suited me because I was very much a card guy. I like my card tricks, card performance. So I didn't have to stray away too far from the cards, but I could put a nice mentalism piece uh, using that uh, together and, and get great reactions. So I started get, to get the flavor for that sort of um, them reactions of not just like, how did you do that? But how did you know that sort of thing? And it, it just really got me thinking and I wanted to start uh, sort of learning a lot more, learning a lot more about mentalism and, and different things. So I started to purchase a lot more magic and, and learn a, a few more things with regards to sort of an EDC mentalism act where I got myself a nice, uh, like a nice wallet with everything that I needed on there that I could keep in. Um, and I, I would, I would buy things. I would do a lot of like research of things that would suit me and, um, and things that came up um, were Steve Dallas will to read when I first very much got into um, mentalism, like as, as sort of wanting to know a lot more about it and actually learn something to perform. Um, I picked up will to read and it just, it, it blew me away. I'd not, I'd not seen anything like that before in, in that way. And it gave me that first flavor of sitting down, um, actually getting somebody involved, giving them a full performance, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and, and having sort of a process rather than it be uh, like a visual thing of watch this or um, this is a trick very quickly snap and this happens. It, it gave me a chance to sort of say, we've done a bit of magic, but look, let's just you know sit down and let's see what else we can do. Let's take it a bit further. And um, I first performed it to uh, my father-in-law and he, the reaction that he gave me was, he said, oh, all this magic stuff you do and that, and it's like, wow. And it, you know, I think, oh, how does that work? But he said this, it, that is different. And, and from a, a lay person's perspective, it, I can see what he, it was completely, it wasn't magic. It was, it was the difference between sort of, um, just to give an example, say uh, Dynamo and Darren Brown where one does sort of street style and one does more, you know, uh, mind reading, that sort of thing. And I really liked the, the reaction that I got. And um, myself and Gary had obviously worked with on screenplay and, and I was coming up with different uh, methods and ways that we put into that particular effect. And I thought I've, I've maybe got uh, a few other ways that I could utilize to maybe to put into an effect not that's going to be ideal for visual magic but maybe something for a mentalism piece um those who know the the method behind screenplay know that it's an original method uh, something that myself and gary worked on and we pride ourselves on that being an original sort of piece um so i wanted to i wanted to go astray away and uh, from doing mentalism alongside gary and i wanted to try and do something just myself with mentalism, right? So, so I wasn't just being directed. I wanted to come up with something like, um, something that I would use and that would suit my style. And I love, like genuinely, I love Will to Read. Craig, your gossip, fantastic. And I, I love the fact that that's a magazine page folded up in the wallet, because I'm from that generation. I still buy magazines, still read magazines. I still do puzzles and stuff. So I, I sort of wanted to take my inspirations, what I, I thought, these things are powerful. These are things that I found uses with, and I want to. I want to make it fit my character. So, uh, so for example, with Will to Read, um, my persona, sort of a sort of happy, smiley sort of thing. When I try and get into that sort of that serious mode, it didn't. It didn't seem something that I would have on me so in my wallet I might have a card effects that are visual or flappy or magnetic -y or whatever but for me to pull a book page out people didn't sort of see me like that but I, so I wanted to create something um that was that could use all that sort of process and and the the idea of having like you say your gossip and magazine page and another one was um Sudoku 2.0 by Miles Thornton although this effect doesn't use anything uh, sudoku wise or anything i love the fact of using a puzzle as a mentalism piece so so this is where i thought right i'll use my strengths and i like puzzles I'll, i've always done crosswords since i was a kid my mom used to do them with us and i always like word searches and things so i basically wanted to create this style of effect um 
in something that I would always have on me that would look natural. Um, and so I, I basically, I started with the process of um, how it was going to work. Uh, and, and then I needed to make sure as well that wasn't going to infringe upon anyone else's methods or anything. So although I utilised a particular system, I fully created that system myself. Um, so everything's completely different. So, so everything's original. And then I had to play with different things to make sure that it would work in such a way that the presentation would flow um, and then just pick it up from there. So it was it was almost like a step by step process of um, I had to create. So I, I sort of worked backwards, if you know what I mean. So I worked with like what I want the result to be, then how would how would we achieve that result and then what I needed to do to achieve that. And then I sort of worked that way. Um, but being um, always having in my mind um, the likes of gossip, will to read, uh, Sudoku, that sort of thing, having puzzles, magazine page, uh, that sort of book test style. And then also I have um, I have a tattoo of it's 6801, but when I turn it around, it's 1089. So that's always one thing. I've always liked that effect. Um, so there's little bonus things, for example, like that sort of thing, but there's bonus things in there that I wanted to create. So even if you didn't want to use that, you had little extra bonus things in so you know it was as much of that sort of thing packed into one page but that looked organic as, as possible so to an extent like you say um like gossip is very much um examinable same will to read you hand the page out they examine it and i very much wanted it to be that sort of thing where even if they stare at it for five minutes or ten minutes they're not going to go on in a minute um, so yeah, so that was basically the aim uh, when when going into to creating it, and yeah, I think I think how it's it's come out now, uh, my uh, my choice of presentation, how I use it, I'm very happy with, and I, and I love the way that I perform it. It works for me, but what I love about it as well is the versatility it's got. For this is if you are a beginner, if you are a, a crossword master. You know, you could you can still use this to, you know, to to your advantage. If if you don't know crosswords puzzles at all, you don't need to you don't need to know them. It's something that you can go look. I'm rubbish at them, but you know, see what you like, and it still work for you. Or you could come across as look. I'm a crossword champion, puzzle champion. I've done this, and the way that it's constructed, it's not like oh well, he was going to know that or he knows the answers or anything like that. It's it's. Um, there's a principle in there where you give them that sort of mind reading, but then also um, something happens where it's like, oh, well, how, how? Maybe he could have read my mind, but how could he have done that sort of thing? Um, so, yeah, it was just that sort of that second kicker that I not struggled with, but I wasn't sure how I wanted it to end. Um, so then the... Uh, the other side of the the sheet. I want obviously I want to spoil anything, but the other side, I wanted to utilize that a lot more as well. Um, so with that, I wanted to say right, that's part of the effect. So you can use this, you can um, use it for this presentation, but also I wanted it to lead on. So if, if basically there's something on there that once you finish this effect, you can use that as a starting point for this next effect sort of thing. So really it was um it sort of became like rather not just a, a a book test style effect it became more of like a utility piece that i could have on me all the time uh, and just having then uh, different options of how i could use it um but yeah ultimately it, the those were the effects that inspired me um, and that got me onto that path of uh, of creating exquisite of, of what it is now and it's such an incredible hook like when you think about it like having uh, you know there's a lot of mentalism and and uh, i love mentalism but yeah a lot of the time i see mentalists there is no hook it's like well i'm going to read your mind mm -hmm. with this people love puzzles yeah and if you have got a person that does magic with rubik's cubes for example mm -hmm. it fits so nicely you can also you can almost come across as like the puzzler you know and have that persona yeah. of all of this stuff that i do with puzzles and yeah, everyone loves doing puzzles. So bringing something out that people can relate to mm -hmm. is just so powerful in that regard. Really yeah, you've, all, you've almost already broken the barrier. If you bring a, um, a particular prop out and they think, oh, if you put it in their hand and it's something that they've never seen, even if it was 
say like you know these puzzles that you get where say the wooden block in and you've got to get it out without you know that sort of thing them them puzzles you if it was something that not, they're not aware of you put it in the hand and they're very like oh sort of thing and i feel like that with the book page if you give them a book page and stuff it's it seems very just like oh this is his book page and they're very sort of delicate with it but i feel with a magazine page and the fact that it's folded like four times or whatever it's just like they're already at ease with handling it and they're like oh, i know what a puzzle is you know they know what it is you've, you've got past that and also they don't have to be um a, a genius like they don't have to they don't even have to have any knowledge of any of the answers that are within the puzzles for this to work um you know so so that's that's what i like about it, how you can make it suit your presentation style so if you wanted to go in as a, a quiz genius and do it that way or if you wanted to go and be like i've never even i haven't even looked at it yet i've just torn it out but we'll try something with it you've there's a lot of freedom with that and and for people that haven't seen it yet can you synopsize what the effect is because one thing that i really like with this there's a bunch of stuff built into it. It's not just like a, a one-trick pony. You've got like lots of different ideas and concepts and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, when Pete uh, Nardi told me about this, he described it as like a mentalism act in your pocket, like a yeah. full-on mentalism act. And mm -hmm. it really is. I mean, can you just briefly synopsize what would happen, uh, you know, or the, the rough idea of what would happen if you perform it to someone? So um, it's... it's... So what what, ha what happens when when I perform it to someone? The, the, so the the reactions what I get and and the the sort of the direction that I take is I just go into like um, like you say it's like a standard puzzle page. I just turn it out of a magazine. There's a few good prizes in the, for the competition. That's why I sort of stole it. I didn't want uh, anyone else having it. Uh, and just have a look through blah blah. And I go into like a, like a proper mind reader. I'm just going to, like, you're going to pick a, pick up on some details or you pick up on, for example, a word, and I'm going to try and pick bits of this uh, from your mind. And I'm, I go on a journey with them where basically I don't just go, yeah, I can read your mind. Um, are you thinking of the colour blue? It's blue. Are you thinking of the colour red? Red. Are you thinking of a rose? It's a rose. It's sort of a journey where it's they're quite difficult to read. And for me it's it's going to be quite a hard process but i do manage to get there and within that i i get sort of cross messages because they've been sort of very difficult to read that um i'm just struggling and i make a few notes and maybe i put these down there's not right and i, and I struggle to the point where they think ah you know i brought them right down where this is not going to work and then I, and then i asked them oh, can, what was it that you were and they would they would give the answer and then I would reveal, in fact, that I was correct. So that that gets to that point where you think, oh, like, well, that's that's the effect done. But then I go, I take them back and I go backwards and do something that is, again, you would bring them down to a level where you make them believe that you've failed, but you've, again, succeeded, but not in such a way where it, it was like the first time where you've, sort of like how did he know that again this is how did he know that but how could that have happened as well so it's almost cross crosses over into a little bit of sort of magic at the end if you will um very very much mentalism based um but yeah that is a, as a standard routine you're offering them like um a bit like not a tarot reading as such, but that you're going to try something that they're quite difficult and you manage to succeed. But then when you succeed, you succeed in a bigger way that even I do thought could have been possible to start with. But then it's not something that it's like, I haven't brought them from here, I've got them to this point and then go and that's it, you put them away. You can sort of, there's a few of the things on there that you can sort of die down and go, well, let's try something with this or let's try something with that. So it doesn't feel like this was always meant to be done uh, like this is just that was you know he did that and that's what it was for you can change uh, the way you perform it you could get um more than one person involved if you wanted to um the the options are really open and it's also a lead-in again like i said before for for other effects as well so so as a, as, as a synopsis i don't know i've never really synopsized <laughs> so much, but yeah i would say that it's um a journey of mentalism, a, a roller coaster journey, a oh. roller coaster where 
you sort you bring them up and down and it's like that that same sort of thing that i like like the aspect with visual where you just at a certain level then all of a sudden it's like what <laughs> and I, I i do have that and i know mentalism a lot of mentalism sorry isn't a lot about that but i just wanted to have that you know your standard mentalism process how you know you you get involved and you it's very believable in, in what you're doing but then also to then have that thing at the end where it's like bam and also like yeah he did that but also that how was that possible sort of thing so i don't really know how to explain that in in english terms but that yeah. nah. <laughs> it's killer so and this really i mean one of the things that's worthwhile talking about it is it's uh it's the perfect tdc you know oh, it's very much so yeah like, like that's, that's one thing right yeah, yeah. It, the EDC term, like we've talked about a lot, it do it gets thrown around a lot of what is classed as an uh, as an EDC, and for me, it is. It's something that you naturally will have on you at all times, and you don't need any extras. And and with this, that is is how it is. What you get is what you need. And once you've, it's not a case of like, oh, it's an EDC, but then I need to have the um, the reset material available in my bag or I need to have this available to change this this is something that's just always ready to go it comes out as is it goes back in as is and you never have to do anything in between so yeah that's um that's very much what yeah I, I, I do pride that on on being that a very uh, you know very compact very organic and 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 a lot of freedom to use it so even if there was five magicians all in one jurisdiction that were doing gigs and, and for example you know if, if it's safe for me this would be phenomenal that five magicians were using my effect at once but say if they were and someone had already seen it you could bring that out and not necessarily think ah oh, i've seen this or something you could you you could perform it completely different to how other people were performing it and it would be a completely different sort of presentation yeah. if you know what i mean essentially the same what you can do with it but there's a lot of freedom in that way so yeah it's um yeah, that that's that's what I'm I'm proud of it being very uh, yeah just the the word I'm looking for is practical yeah very practical mm -hmm. absolutely one hundred percent one last question before mm -hmm. I bring it back into the studio okay. um, was it difficult to go down this route compared to a lot of the stuff that you've created in the past because I've said to your camera your brain is just so weird and I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that in a very complimentary way. I don't know, you know, you can look at something and and come up with the most intricate gaff, and I'm just like, well, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> was it difficult to like kind of go in a totally different direction with this from a creativity point of view, or was you it know, kind of a fun thing to branch off into? It it wasn't difficult uh, in the sense of um, the the journey from what what I what the idea was to actually it been a, a complete product because because it was something that I wasn't creating essentially for right this I'm not just going to do this to market it or this is what people want or supply and demand sort of thing this was something for me like where um there's an effect that's come out recently with Alakazam and for me it replaces maybe three effects that I would naturally would have had or magicians would naturally have in their close-up case and this effect covers those things so for for me as a performer i would now use that and that whittles my case down smaller and smaller so i can and this is what i want to do have these things that i like like the, the puzzle aspects the um the the mind reading the book test the magazine page so they all this i wanted all this and, I, and, I, and this is what I'm about, and that's if it's my character, but I wanted it to um, be something, like you say, that I was interested in, that I enjoyed doing, which was puzzles. So that, for me, I think, took away any difficulty in trying to create it, because I'm familiar with puzzles, um, even the, the little, the intricate details, like where, you know, C, Fig 1, or, you know, these little things that make it seem like a real puzzle. I've, I've, I've gone through all those sort of even just through life doing doing puzzles and things so for me to implement them things into to this it was just like sort of natural it wasn't what do i need to do how do i need to do it it was just right i need to do this so it'll need to work like this um and then obviously i went through 
um, sections of things that I want to do. And, and like most things, you don't just go write them to, and I'll use them to. You have a number of things, you work out what's going to work best. Um, but yeah, I sort of had a vision of how I wanted it to, to be. And the, the one thing, the one thing I will say what I can sort of without revealing anything is with a lot of book tests, um, or with book tests as such, they look at a word, whether it's you force a page or whether you ask them to pick a word, it's, it's a word that they've looked at. Whereas with, with this, you, you basically, with the option you have, if you wanted to do it this way, you can read the mind of a spectator for something that's not even written down. Do you know what I mean? So you've read the mind and it's not as if you've gone out, oh, they thought, oh, you could have just looked where I was looking on the page or this. This particular thing that you're going to read from their thoughts isn't even on the paper. You didn't even know about this thing. So it's not just, oh, well, you could have read that book a million times and memorized it. This isn't even written down. So it's, so I sort of wanted to implement that in there as well and that is just an option of performance but yeah it was um with that I, I sort of took those traits and the the what I'd learned through sort of with Ace Magic with the type of mentalism they have uh, Martin Pierce is obviously a big inspiration with the the effects that he brings to us which are, are very um I would say simple to perform not easy by any stretch because to think of them you have to be a genius but he makes it sort of life easy for the for the performer and yeah I just sort of took all these inspirations and things I'd learned where I say work alongside Gary with screenplay and such like and and yeah just sort of tried to to use that the best I could um whether it was going to be oh this could be a marketed effect or whether it was just something that I think right this now suits me this goes in my world and I've always got it on me uh, but yeah no fortunately it's at a point where um it's you know it's looking like it could be um, something that people would really enjoy using and, and get a lot of use out, use out of, which is, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, over the moon with that. Absolutely. That's amazing. Thank you. Now, so I'm going to bring it back to the studio in a second. I'm going to give okay. it a full review. But before I do, while I've got you on the channel, can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that's coming up from Steve-O Watson in the coming weeks and months? You don't have to show us anything. I know that everything is hush-hush. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what I can... You know, what, is there anything that you can, like, mention and tease us about? I, I could sort of... I suppose I could just do this. I could just show this, because it says nothing, it represents nothing, it's nothing. So what I will do... Actually, I was got, I'll do this. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that is all you're getting. Oh yeah. my god, that's gonna be so good! But yes, keep an eye out for this one. <laughs> that's also another kind of debar. I, I don't want to talk about it at all, but it's another kind of a departure away from what you do as well. Yeah, it's not. Again, it's not something that you would think. Oh yeah, typical Steve or whatever you know. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of. I feel like it's an opportunity now for me to not be that sort of. <laughs> no pun intended, a one-trick pony sort of thing. Um, I, I do want to keep learning, and I think the more that I learn different things, so I feel like at, at the moment, um, I'm really getting into watching stage magic. I don't like to look at any sort of methods or anything because I like to enjoy it. Um, and myself and Gary are going to see the Ehrlich Brothers in uh, just under two weeks. We've been waiting for about three years. And I'm really looking forward to going and having my mind blown. And I know that it's going to get me more into not, not finding out how they're done, but looking more into like stage illusions, maybe even just videos and things. And that's when I know that I'll sort of take those premises and, and those ideas that are a completely different genre, and then I'll make them work for me uh, in such a way. And I feel like that's what I've done with uh, visual magic, with now to start to do with mentalism. And I hope to do that continuing uh, in the future to sort of, yeah, put my own sort of spin on it. Um, uh, and I feel like we go through the world thinking that we're all like, oh, I'm the only one who thinks I'm the only person like this, or no one un understand. But when we talk about things, 
we realize that we're not all that different. So if you're doing something that you're creating essentially for you to work for you, you'll find that that probably works for a lot of other people as well. So uh, uh, among, uh, along, along doing that, uh, enjoying and, and sort of bettering yourself and learning new things, um, yeah, it can have an impact on other people as well. So yeah, I know that didn't really make sense of what I was trying to, to get across, but yeah, I want to, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I love gimmick making, I love crafting, I'm never going to stop doing that. But I'll never, that's not just like, that's not where it ends for me. I want to get involved in all aspects because it's such a passion. The community, the whole, you know, magic art itself. I wouldn't want to limit myself to just being known for that or for this. Um, yeah, I do like the freedom. Um, but yeah, with with like the gimmicks, um, I would always put my heart and soul into a product, whether it be a new, uh, something I'm dabbling in that's new or whether it's something that I've been learning or, or vice versa, you know, it's, yeah, I always put my heart and soul into it. So, yeah, with that one, yeah, um, I'm really proud of that one. Really proud and very excited for, for when that is released. Um, don't know an exact date or anything yet, but it won't be uh, a very long time. It won't be a very long time. Now I'm even more excited. <laughs> now I'm even more excited. And Steve-O, I've said it before on this channel, I'll say it again, you're one of the nicest people in Magic, if not the nicest person in Magic. Oh, man, thank you so much. It honestly genuinely means, like, so much, like, comments like that, because, you know, who doesn't, you, you know, who doesn't want to get on with people and, and just, you know, have friends in the community and stuff. So to, to get feedback and to get responses like that, Greg, honestly, it genuinely, like, it makes my day, and it is what, for me, what it's all about. I know, and I can tell. You're incredibly talented. Thank You're an amazing you. creator, wonderful performer, super nice guy. You'd help anybody. Thank so uh, I can't wait to see what else you've got coming out. But I am now going to take this thing back to the <laughs> studio and give it a full review. Ryland's not doing a review. I am. So it probably won't get 15 million percent like most oh, no. <laughs> So just uh, out of, it'll be out of 100 then. It'll be around about the 100 mark, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. So, well, but, if you yeah. if you just if you happen to go for a low percentage, if it's something that doesn't suit your forte, maybe something that you wouldn't use, and you go around the low percentage, twenty three. You know, if you're going to go in the twenties, go for twenty three. Just give me something. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. Uh, having seen this, it's going to get way more than twenty three. Oh, thank uh, you. It, man. It's, it's killer. But yeah, you can uh, you can get these uh, directly from Ace Magic Studio or Alakazam, obviously. Yeah, Alakazam. Um, yeah, they, they'll be they'll be showcased on our website. But obviously, if you go onto the Ace Magic website and click it, it will take you through. Yeah, for there to purchase. But yeah, um, yeah. I, I hope uh, you like it as much as I do, guys, and I hope you get as much use it the use out of it as I have because it genuinely is something. One of those things where you know a lot of things are created for the community or for maybe where there's a gap in the market. But this was. Basically, it was inspirations and it was something that I wanted to get a lot of you out, use out of. So, yeah, I'm hoping that you can do the same. Amazing. Steve, -O, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Um, I will see you again soon. You will indeed. Thank you so much, Craig. So, first of all, thank you to Steve O. Watson for uh, jumping on and doing that interview. Uh, I'm good friends with Steve, but I will Steve O. But I will tell you the same thing that I said to him. I'm going to be completely 100% honest about this product. If I don't like it, I'm going to say I don't like it. Uh, however, you, you're pretty safe because this is a really great trick. So, you heard the interview. This is basically, like I said at the very beginning, an everyday carry that allows you to have a book test in your wallet and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. Now, before I talk about anything else, I wanna do a performance. So I'm gonna show you a performance of me doing this to Ryland. Now, Ryland hasn't seen this. He's never seen it before. He doesn't know what it is at all. So um, his reaction is a genuine reaction to this trick. It's not like he's watched it with me, uh, he hasn't. So. Let's, uh, let's do this as a performance to Ryland, and then after the performance, I'll give it a review. Okay, right, so I'm gonna show you an amazing trick. Yeah. Now, you know that I catch a trains a lot. Yeah. You come on the train with me sometimes as yeah. well. And when I'm on the train, it's a nightmare. I love trains, but you can't get signal, you can't get internet. 
So instead, I buy those puzzle magazines. Have you seen them in shops? Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I know you love puzzles. Did um, you buy them from like WH Smith? Yeah, WH Smith and places like that. And I like reading them and doing the word search. I'm not very good at it. I know you're better at word searches and crosswords than me. You must get that off your mom. But I still like them. And the other day, I bought this. Um, I bought this magazine, and when I finished with it, I chucked it away. But I ripped one page out, and the reason is. I thought it was a really interesting page. You know, like when I'm always like going in shops and I'm like, I can do a trick with that. I can do a trick with that. And I'll go into like a stationery shop and I'll come out with a load of random stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to invent a magic trick using this stuff. That's basically what happened with this. I saw it and I was like, this is a really interesting page because there's a ton of stuff on it. You've got like a crossword, you've got a word search, you've got number crunch, you've got pictures. And then on the back, you've got like loads of different prizes and oh, destinations. I want all of them, want oh, all of them prizes. You want all the prizes. <laughs> um, we're going to try and do something here, okay? Yeah. So on this side, there's a stack load of words and all of the words are different because there's two different puzzles. You've got the word search and there's loads of different clues. Now, um, I haven't actually done the word search yet, but you're better at word searches than me. You could very easily figure out the word and find it in there, right? Mm -hmm. I know you could. And then up here, I did do the crossword. So there's about 30 different words in the crossword as well. So there's about 50 different words altogether. I did actually complete the crossword. So the, plus, the clues are there, but I've actually completed it. Anyway, what I'd like you to do, mate, yeah. I'll turn around. Okay. What I want you to do is just have a look through this thing. And I want you to think of a word. And then when you've thought of a Any word... word any word at all Anywhere. on either puzzle okay. and then when you thought of a word what i want you to do is remember the number uh, of, uh that it is so for example if you're thinking of this word it'd be number seven this one would be number 10 you get the idea yeah and then when you've done it fold it up a couple of times so i can't see anything okay. i will look that way now while you're doing that you you just let me know when you're done and while I'm, while he's doing this i will point out that literally every single uh word on there is completely different he has a completely free choice i'm not influencing him in any way and he's not going to write it down. He's not going to tell anyone. He's going to keep that word locked inside his brain. Are you done? Yeah. Good stuff. So uh, we're going to try and do this now, right? Look at me. I want you to imagine that you you walk into, um, yeah, you're in the cinema because you like the cinema, don't you? Yeah. I want you to imagine that you're in the cinema mm -hmm. and there's a cinema screen in front of you. And on the cinema screen, there's a word. That could happen. Yeah, and there's a word, one word, and it's written really big. It fills the entire screen, okay. and it's the word you're thinking of. I want you to look at each individual word. Yeah? Word. Uh, think of each individual letter in that letter. word, sorry, yeah? You're looking at all the letters, yeah? Yeah. Okay, there's definitely, I, I, I get a really strong impression there's an I in there. Is that right? There's an I in that word? Yes. There is an I in that word. Okay, I, I'm, uh, have a look at the word. There's another letter nearby. Yeah, is there an L there as well? Is there an L? No. Hang on. Are you sure there's no L? I'm seeing an L. Oh, no, hang on. It's not an L. It's a T. The letter uh, there's yeah. a T. And I say it's right next to the I. It is right next to it. It's, it's the letter before the I, isn't it? So it's T yeah. and then I. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, have a look at the whole word again. I know there's a T and an I in there. I want to focus on each individual letter. Okay. The first letter's an S, isn't it? No. No? What is the first letter? D. Not an S? No. Oh, I'm seeing an S. I'm seeing an S. The S isn't at the beginning, it's near the end, isn't it? It's yeah. after the T and the I. Yeah. It's after the T and the I. There's a T and an I, and then there's an S. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and do this. This doesn't always work, but I'm going to give this a shot. I've got some business cards here, yeah? Yeah. And I've also got a pen. Okay. Concentrate on the word. Are you concentrating? Yeah. Concentrate harder. No, that can't be right. There's no V in the word, is there? There's not a V. No. No. That's not right. Let me try again. Concentrate on the whole word. See it. I want you to pretend you're shouting it out loud. Don't actually shout it out loud, but in your head, scream the word. Can you do that? Yeah. Hmm. When you're screaming, it is like you're screaming. You, it, this, this word makes you feel not scared, but unhappy. Is that right? Yeah. This word makes you feel very unhappy. Yes. Think I might have it. Think I might have it. 
I've committed myself right now. Now, think about this, Ryland. You never wrote it down. You never told anyone. You never spoke it out loud. No. It existed in your head yeah. and your head only. And the sheet. And the sheet, which I haven't even, you know, you've been holding on to that the whole time. And there are literally 50 or 60 words you could have picked from. Yeah. For the first time, what was the word? Dentist. Dentist, really? Yeah. Look at what I wrote. Dentist. How cool is that, right? That's cool. Is that cool? Yeah. Let's see if we can go one step further. Do you remember that number that I told you to remember? Yeah. Yeah, you remember the number, yeah? What I want you to do is, you said that you wanted all the prizes. You can't have all the prizes. I'll look away. What I want you to do is look at the prizes and whatever number you're thinking of, like look at that prize and that's the prize you're going to get. Okay, open it up and then close it and put it back under your hand. Okay, so you can't have all the prizes, but you can have one. You got one? I've already got that one. Have you got that one? Yeah. Okay. Look at me. I want to imagine using this prize. I use it all the time. Use it all the time. I'm really struggling with this. You use it all the time. It's not a toothbrush. Um, uh, I'm really struggling. Uh, for some reason, I've just got a mental blank. I'm not getting anything off you. Ryland, what was, what was the prize? Television. Television? Really? Yeah. You're not going to believe this. Uh, You're not going to believe this. You remember earlier on when I was trying to get dentist? And you said And no, I got it wrong and I put said, that and down you there. Said no v. Yeah. Do you know why? Why? I actually wrote down on the other card TV. I knew exactly no, 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 what no, you no, would no, do. No, 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 that's, that's literally the TV. I know, right? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so that is a full performance. And as you can see, it's very, very clever. Now, there's a few things that I want to point out about this. First of all, this is the actual copy that I've been practicing with. I haven't actually done this in a gig yet. I plan on doing it in a gig, but I've done it to a few people in kind of social situations, but I've not done it in a gig, but I am planning on doing it. Um, but this is well worn already because I've been carrying it around everywhere with me uh, while I've been practicing it. And I say practicing it, it doesn't take much practice when you understand what's going on, it's actually fairly easy to do. Um, the design of it is amazing. Big shout out to Gary Sumter uh, because he did an amazing job with the design. It looks like what it should look like, which is amazing. Really, really good. Now, there's a few positives with this. First of all, normally, you know, when you're doing a book test, you need a whole book, right? With this, you haven't got a book. You've got one sheet of paper. And because of how this side of it works, you really feel like you can think of any word. Like it really feels, and they can, like there's no force here. There's no way of limiting their choices. I think there's something like 28 there. There's like 20 odd there. You've got about 50 words that they can think of. And they are, you know, they are all different. You've got 50 words that you think of here and they are all different. Now, people are then gonna be saying, well, okay, wow. I mean, that's gonna require some memory work, no you get supplied with a really awesome crib that fits inside your business cards. So you saw in the routine when I took out the business cards and I just spread them out briefly, that's when I got all the information that I needed. Um, which is great because you don't bring the business cards out straight away. You, you, you give them some positive hits, first of all. And I do like that the very first thing that you say is a hit. Um, although there's a small element of fishing in there, um, it's very, very limited. It's very minimal fishing. It feels like you're right almost every single step of the way, um, which is which is also another really nice point of the uh, of the particular trick. Uh, and I do like the fact that Steve O's incorporated into this. When you've got the word, I do like the fact that you then tell them to think of a prize. And there's a load of different prizes there, and it feels like they they can think of any prize. But in reality, because of when you looked at the crib you already know the prize they're gonna be thinking of. So I love the presentational idea of writing something down, putting it down there and saying, no, that's not right, let me try again. Getting it correct, then having them to think of a prize, and then you go back to the card that was on the table the whole time, and you wrote down on there what the prize was they were thinking of. Now, when I watched the performance of this, that part absolutely fooled the hell out of me. And I was thinking, well, maybe it's some sort of multiple out system and that was the best out and they hit the best out, but it's not a multiple out system. You know automatically what prize they're gonna pick every time. And that's a really clever way of doing this as well. 
Um, then on top of all of that, there's other ways that you can do it as well. So if you don't want them to think of a prize, you can have them think of a destination because underneath the prizes, there's win a luxury break for two at any of these beautiful destinations. There's 52 destinations and the crib will also tell you the destination they're going to think of. So you could, for example, have them think of a prize and a destination and reveal both of them. Or you could just do the prize or you could just do the destination. It's totally up to you. There's other things built into this as well. There's a lot of little bonus routines, including the fact that this actually ties into another Alakazam Ace Magic Studio product called Spread 2.0, Spread 2, um, which is a pack of cards with lots of dest destinations on. This actually links in with that. So anybody who's got Spread, this works perfectly with it. On this side, you've got this number crunch thing, which is a whole bunch of different equations. And you've got to work out what the number is at the end. You can get somebody to get a calculator and work out what this is. And when they work it out, it's going to be 1099. So you can, at the beginning, you can have somebody, you can do the 1089 force on somebody, have them think of that number, and, and then you can have them do this equation. They'll get to 1089, which is the number that they apparently just thought of in their head. Uh, and the time misdirection between them thinking of the number and this equation makes that a really strong revelation as well. And it's these little bits that make you realise just how much Steve has worked, Steve has worked on this. You can tell that this has not been rushed to market. You can tell that this is something that Steve has been working on for a long time. You can tell he's really thought about this. You know, there's other creators that would bring something like this out and half arse it and just maybe put the main routine in and that's it. But he's taken the time to really kind of explore every little element of it so that it's as strong as it can be. And that's great. And that's what I absolutely love when I see that sort of stuff. So yeah, I really like this. Um, like I really, really like this. Um, it's gonna have to work very hard to kick gossip out of my wallet. I'm trying to think if I can have gossip and this in there. And I think I could, possibly. Um, my EDC, what I keep in my wallet is now getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but I'm definitely going to, you know, what's nice, by the way, is you get three or four sheets in here. You don't just get one sheet. You get three or four sheets and three or four cribs. So you can very, very easily have this in your performing wallet and in your everyday carry wallet. I've already put this in uh, a couple of different wallets and we'll see whether it stays in my act. I think it will. I love, I love the freedom of choice. There's certain things that I really like in here. I love the way that they've incorporated the... Um, uh, the crossword into that. Actually, I've just realised that doesn't live in there. That lives in here. Uh, I love the uh, I love the the crossword. I love the word search. It's just it's just good. It's good. It's what people are looking for. It's a really good product that allows you to seemingly read minds. This is something that I'd be more than happy to perform, and uh, I know it would get a really good reaction. So I'm going to give this 97%. I think it's exceptional, uh, and I want to see more from Stevo. Uh, you know, I've just thought of him as a gimmick maker, as a crafter. Um, in, in the past, and that's because that's a, a lot of what we know Steve O. Watson for is for making gimmicks, but this has shown me he is more than just a one-trick pony, and I can't wait to see what he's coming up with next. As you saw in the interview, I got a sneak peek of something else that's coming out soon, and man alive, that's going to blow. If you thought this was good, that's just next level, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about this. 97%, really, really highly recommended. Well done, Steve-O Watson. So there you go, guys. That is another review show special in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. If you haven't already done so, go join the Netrix, www.thenetrix.com. Go join the Netrix and see what all the fuss is about. Uh, try it out for a month and see what you think. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a, me uh, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again with a whole bunch more videos next week. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic. TV.